Hello, friends. Thank you for joining our circle. We gather today the time of the new moon of Capricorn. The exact new moon was a few hours ago, and so we work with direct energy of the Capricorn. We're into our beautiful planet, and we continue our work with the within the cycle of Capricorn with the topic Will to Love, invoking mast intent to close the door where evil dwells. We started our meditation on this topic at the time of the full moon, invoking hierarchical guidance and vision on this topic. And we've been holding this topic for the last couple of weeks, sharing our impressions at the quarter moon meeting and the, the community impressions board. And we will continue doing it today, preparing for our meditation at the end of our meeting, which will bring our different seeds into the group chalice to form and magnetize thought forms that would lead humanity at this challenging period of collective evolution. This topic is part of the larger theme that we hold at the time of uh, as sun passes signs of cardinal cross, which Capricorn is a part. And this theme is uh, cleaning the house of religion and politics as one of three major prerequisites for the reappearance of the Christ. So let us hold that in mind as we share our impressions today and work together in our meditation for the common good. I invite now Birgit to sound the statement of purpose to open our work today and following that, to sound our code of right relations as we prepare to open our work through the naming circle and sharing our impressions and thought. Over to you, Birgit. Thank you, Alexander. And greetings all. Our purpose is to magnetize the ideas of common good, freedom, and brotherhood as the highest values of humanity at this time. We recognize and share diversity of perspectives in our group, creating a space capable of invoking, receiving, interpreting, and radiating a higher synthetic vision. We serve as an asramic outpost, building a group bridge of Buddhic energy. We evoke the soul of humanity. We envision humanity as being the seed that is flowering. We prepare the way for the reappearance of the coming one. And our conduct for right relationships. Unconditional love. We are aspiring to act as souls, inclusive, limitless, and magnetic. Harmlessness. 
we dare from a place of harmlessness, supporting the common good, avoiding negative criticism in mental, verbal, written, and electronic communication. Diversity of perspectives. Diversity of perspectives helps us to recognize the wider horizon of truth. None of us alone knows the whole truth. Together, we create a higher point of perception. We encourage diversity and keep our individual minds open and receptive. We hold our focus on the mental plane and higher. Honesty with compassion. By sharing one's own truth, knowing it will be received with compassion by other group members. We promote integrity within the group. Listening. We create a space for deeper listening to each other from the place of the higher voice of silent wisdom and the spiritual hierarchy of the planet. Over to you, Tracy. Thank you, Perky, and thank you, everyone, for joining today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and we will start with our naming circle. As we begin our focus today in this new moon meditation, the naming circle unites our heart across distance as we begin our alignment and bring ourselves fully into our group and our group work. By uniting our hearts in this way, we begin naturally to work telepathically through our group mind. And the key to this telepathic work is in the etheric alignment which creates the group field and allows it to become both a receiving and transmitting agent for higher ideas and energies. We will begin by calling our names into the circle, starting with our organizers. And as your name is called, please unmute yourself, say your name, and where you are calling in from. For example, Tracy Arbor calling in from Novi, Michigan, USA. And as we go through this, let us turn our attention to our hearts and the heart center of the group gathered today as each one of us calls ourselves into this circle. Alexander. Hello, this is Alexander Ilchuk calling in from New York, United States. Welcome. Brigitte. This is Birgitta Rasmussen calling in from Slales, Denmark. Welcome. Lynn. Hello, um, this is Lynn Green. I'm in Columbus, Ohio. Welcome. Andrea. Hello, everyone. This is Andrea Ross, and I'm calling from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, in the United States. Welcome. Judy. And 
Judy, please try to unmute yourself. Probably some problem with connection. Judy's connecting from Massachusetts in the United States. Welcome, Judy. Jillian. Hello, everyone. This is Jillian Douglas from Norfolk, UK. Welcome. Maria Christina. Maria Christina Donoghue from Tucson, Arizona desert. Um, Welcome. Ruth. Hello, everyone. This is Ruth Dittmore. I'm calling in from Corvallis, Oregon, the United States. Welcome. Anne. Hello, this is Anne Creter from Riverton, New Jersey, USA. Welcome. John. Hello, everyone. This is John Sedevy calling in from Herman, Missouri, USA. Welcome. Daniela. Greetings, everyone. Daniela Nestorovich. I'm calling in from Brussels, Belgium. Welcome. Maria. Hello, everyone. I'm Maria Stewart, calling in from Victoria, <clears throat> British Columbia, Canada. Welcome. Kiki. Hello, Kiki Bill. I'm calling in from Washington, D.C., USA. Welcome. Jacqueline. Hello, everyone. I'm near Kiki in Richmond, Virginia. This is Jacqueline Pogue. Welcome, Helen. Hello, uh, this is Helen Franklin. I'm calling in from England, uh, near London. Welcome. Thank you, everyone. Now that we are linked together as a group, let us share a few moments in silence to align, forming a triangle between Shambhala, the hierarchy, and humanity. May our efforts be of the highest vibration in selfless service for our purpose. Over to you, Alexander. Thank you, Tracy. And thank you, friends. We are opening now our circle for sharing, bringing our impressions from this meditation on the questions that Lean offered for reflection to us at the full moon time. You can see these questions on the screens and I will read them to start our sharing. And yet let us remember that these questions are just a guide for us and they not limit our conversation as our topic is much more wider. Will to love, invoking mass intent to close the door where evil dwells. 
how can the energies of Capricorn, both concretizing and transformative, be directed to effect the spiritual evolution of humanity, leading out of many materialism to a sense of responsibility and to spiritual awakening. What part can religious institutions play in awakening humanity and invoking the new world order in this time of transition? What current religious ideas can be used in transition and what new ideas should define the new world religion? Is forming and working in groups, as addressed by Decay in so many of his books, an important step towards utilizing the will to love and invoking mass intent? Why is this so? So please us let us share. And as we share, let's perceive this as a meditative process where we listen to the sound of each of us and recognizing the most resonant seeds that we would be able to offer into group chalice to be magnetized and radiated. Please unmute yourself when you are ready to share. Hi, this is Jill. Um, I'll begin uh, by just mentioning something that's been taking my attention lately over here in uh, England, and that is the post office scandal that has been found that the post office has been wrongly accusing the postmasters of stealing money and taking money back that they have said has been stolen. And this has been going on for many years and it has been known about, but nothing was being done about it. And some of them have been to prison They've lost their life savings, etc. They've had an absolutely hellish time. And suddenly one of them, because they were all told that they were the only one having the problem, and as they were scattered all over the place, there was no communication between them. So one man decided to try and contact all other postmasters and see if he could find others. And there were hundreds of them. So... He got them all together in meetings, etc., and they formed a group. And they have successfully been made into a drama on the television, which has got the attention of the whole country. And now the government can't work quickly enough on it, and things are happening. And I think this shows the importance of group work. And rather than each person trying to do something for themselves. Thank you. Yes, this is John. Um, so in looking at the third question, what what came to mind in terms of an impression is is the word harmony. And I I think to you know reading within the within DK's books, it's this idea of it's the the group work in and itself in and of itself is good, but what makes it useful to hierarchy and humanity in turn is harmonious group interaction. So it's really the harmony underlying the group. And if the group's in, inharmonious, then the works the work's not useful. And so I, I think what the groups do is that they serve as a, a microcosm to the overall potential of humanity and the mass intent. And so again, this this can um this can scale up. And so if you start with a small, say a, a harmonious group of say two or, or three people, 
and then that scales up even further and further and serves as useful models. Um, you know, just as a previous commenter was saying, this people see that there's power in numbers in harmoniously working together when there's that that common interest or common bond to to get something done that that's important that you can't um, that you can't do on your own. Thank you. This is um, oh sorry go ahead Anne. Oh um I just wanted to say that um in terms of what we're speaking of about groups I find it really um hopeful today that right before I got on this call that I was watching the group of the uh at the international criminal court in the Hague actually having a meeting about um, South Africa um, belief that um, Israel is uh, perpetuating perpetrating genocide and it, it, it it's a group of that is I don't it's in harmony. It's a group that is really focused on a problem in humanity that has been with us for so long. And I know that today's the the new moon, so uh, it gives me hope. I'm not sure how it addresses the questions, but I leave that up to you to to see. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, this is Maria. I don't know if I'm if you can hear me. Um, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Maria. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I, I find the question number three particularly interesting because I am part of a spiritual group, and in our spiritual session, um, a lot of really good work comes of it. And I think I always think of it when two or more are together, I am with you. And so I think about um, the Christ impulse and that being part of. Uh, when you're in a group formation. But there's also a component of our group where we have a board and a lot of conflict can arise in that. And um, that can be disconcerting, but I think what's really important is um, the group's ability to work through that conflict towards something harmonious. I feel that that is a spiritual practice in it and um, and a kind of a um, uh, that that roomy phrase about you know if you complain about every rub how will you be polished and so I think groups also help us to as you know being that microcosm as the, of the macrocosm that it's really important that we learn to work through those conflicts. Yeah, just the fact that we're seeing, we're actually noticing more aware of group activity, especially in the last few years, um, really coming to the forefront, whether good or bad is John mentioned uh, harmonious or disharmonious, uh, disharmoniously. Um, groups are coming together. Um, examples were given already by people that preceded me speaking today. And uh, it came to mind of the farmers in Germany they just had on the news the other day. Um, not local news, that's for sure, or international news. It was through a podcast that I heard of the farmers. And I find it interesting that our topic is the will to love and invoking massed intent. And that's exactly what's happening. It's the masses that are starting to form groups, not just government groups and things that have been around for a long time that formed groups, but individual human beings are starting to come together as groups, which whatever the cause might be, or whether it's destructive or non-destructive, I think the whole point 
overlooking when you're looking at the whole thing from a bird's eye view um, with non-judgment. We can see that the masses are starting to come together and group and grouping together, which is really a big shift in in our evolution, I think. And it's internationally. Thank you. So this is Lynn. Um, I've been thinking about groups too lately. Um, and it seems to me that um, one wonderful thing about um, spiritual groups, at least, is that um, it seems that um, our, our powers are increased many fold by just joining together. Um, our sensitivity, our intelligence, our creativity, all seems to truly blossom um, and increase by joining together. Uh, and I think um, one in my life, the groups, the spiritual groups I've been in, um, the major cause of success has been, uh, as far as relationships among the people, has been the ability of um, people to lay down their personality concerns and issues, uh, or at least see them from a distance, see them um, with some um, dispassion um, and objectivity, and to actually be more concerned with the presence of soul energy uh, and higher energies um, that seems to transform the group experience. Um, and uh, fortunately, I, I was fortunate enough to be in a group when I was very young, um, in the in the old days <laughs> um, of the early '80s. I joined a group, and it was led by a, a woman with a who was a devoted student, um, and had a strong personality, and um, she made sure that <laughs> people's priorities were right. Um, which, though, in the long run aided us because we've been together ever since then in one form or another and have had to uh, transmute the whole thing when she passed. She was older um, and it became a matter of each person trying to contribute and each person trying to sort of police themselves and maybe asking for help now and then, but it became a matter of, of uh, a more type of new age group that um, with no one strong leader, but everyone contributing in the ways they could. It's been, I've been so fortunate to have that experience. And I'm sure some of the other as of you have had similar experiences too. Um, but anyway, um, I'm so, so happy to be part of this group. Uh, it's such a joy in, um, there's so much love shared, and I, I just thank you so much for all of you for um, being who you are and being accepting and um, working with the high energies that you all do. Thank you very much. Uh, Jacqueline, please share. Hi. Maria Christina here. Um, the focus on groups reminds me of, as many have commented, on the emerging um, evolutionary progress being made, if you will, by humanity is because we start off is herd consciousness, um, which there's not very much thinking that goes on. We had people all come together and 
are swept up in a herd consciousness, if you will. Uh, and then from that, we have to emerge and become conscious individuals to where we form that individual consciousness so that we have a responsibility and we are conscious of our responsibilities. And then eventually it becomes group consciousness where we, as an individual, don't move blindly, but consciously choose to come together, consciously choose to cooperate and acknowledge our part in greater wholes. Um, the Tibetan notes that it really requires a group to respond to hierarchical impression because of the um, many energies, each of us perhaps not being quite enlightened, um, and our head centers, three in particular, he notes that may not be at the, you know, awakened state, so that it is very important for the great ones to work with groups since it's rare, he says, and I quote, being seldom able to find a person whose three physical head centers are simultaneously active, and they have to work with large groups before the quota of energy is supplied to our elders for the accomplishment of their ends for that which is necessitated. Um, he he gets into it quite a little bit there in Cosmic Fire, if anybody in, is interested, around the pages of um, 960s, 964, Man and the Fire Spirits, the Will and Creation, and how it really, uh, it takes many of us being attentive and coming together and be willing to be impressed by the higher to more adequately um, sense to really draw down that higher inspiration. Thank you. There's technical aspects to that, but that's all. I think the Tibetan <clears throat> also makes a reference to the heart center not being able to open unless there is group energy flowing through it. There's somewhere a, a passage that the individual cannot open and experience the energy of the heart center. It needs to be in a group, and that seems to follow on that similar idea. I was looking at these uh, religious ideas just, just a little bit. Um, I had a group of uh, people <clears throat> meditating with me the other day, and they were they were mostly uh, church girls. So at the end, instead of sounding the great invocation, I suggested we sounded the um, our Father, which art in, in heaven. And I was actually quite surprised how very similar the uh, the ideas put, put forth are. But one of them, which is about this master intent closing the door of evil dwells, um, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And I'm presuming this is the, the same energy as the, as the will to close the door when evil dwells. Um, I'm mean, one, just wondering what the temptation is. And I, I think it is something to do with wanting to express one's own personality 
rather than the group. And I've noticed over the years how very easy it is uh, for people to come away from a group and, and say, they said, and forget we, we forget that we're, we're part of it, um, that it, it is a group decision. And then you get this um, sort of transgression of, of going back into the personality. So I, I think there are religious ideas which do play into the same work. I mean, there. The church speaks a great deal about the <clears throat> reappearing Christ and Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. It, it, it's a, a very profound part of the teaching and yet it doesn't seem to have that imminent um, belief behind it that perhaps we, we have. Thank you. I notice that, that Jackie has her hand up while you... perhaps um, she would like to speak thank thank you um i was thinking that as i was listening to everyone more and more kept coming in and i'm thinking i i'm i'm not i've got too much in my head with words right now so i'm going to try to say it simply but the, addressing the third question also, I've noticed for myself ex experiencing group work and with other friends that when we talk about our work in group, that it it's more obviously more than the sum total of its parts. It's it's magnified beyond the the numbers in terms of radiation and energy. It's not about how many people we need. It's how committed the people are in the group as a group consciousness and how that enriches the life of ourselves and the group to be held with love because so few individuals in our world today are held with love and that when in a group when we can hold that love for the whole group and those without with beyond the group obviously not just within the group but that quality of love is is so rare to be unconditionally loved in our world today that it it feels very transformative and that as the group experiences giving that love they receive that love and they know they are that love. It reinforces that we are itself a love, an instrument of love because we are love. And I think that that group can help us strengthen our intention to use love wisely and to combine it with wisdom. And even though the group may also test our ability to love, that very testing in the group work can strengthen our own individual love and the group love as, as at, in the process of it. So that's something I was also thinking about in addition to everything everyone else is saying. Thank you. There is also another aspect of uh, working in the group. If the group works genius with genius inspiration to be open to what is coming uh, through the group intuition, through the group heart, through the group centers, There is very high chance that the the message uh, or the impression that 
that group receives would be very coherent to a uh, message that other groups receive. And that's where it brings us the recognition that it's not just one group, but it's this multiple hundreds and thousands uh, groups around the world that being open to its intuition work as part of the wider whole, wider system, being part of the this network of light, part of the this network of ashramic outposts. And that's where this recognition how the masculine tent can be formed become much more feasible and something that we can work with. I was really thrilled hearing and what you shared that you listened today, this hearing in the hack. Because uh, last night I saw on my Instagram feed that uh, a friend of mine uh, uh, was posting that she will be working today as an interpreter at this courtroom in the hack, exactly at that case, uh, South Africa and versus genocide in Israel. And just when I heard that, it's like, wow, we're part of the same living system. We uh, that I I know about that initiative that they work as a group there in the hack, and now I hear he, about this in our circle here, and we each of us will represent our own regional groups in all those different parts of the world where which we heard at the beginning in the naming circle, and it's all part of this organism of ashramic perception and that's it's in a way each group is part of that connecting tissue between the hierarchy and humanity or potentially can be that tissue thank you Yeah, just a quick little story because it brought to mind when you were talking about we're becoming more of a network uh, of light. And I'm looking just at the topic of the massed intent also. We're definitely not just groups, but individuals also are joining the network. Um, I just had a very weird conversation <laughs> this week Um with my cobbler uh, that works on some of my shoes for me, just an everyday Joe kind of guy. And I don't know how this came up. He started sharing with me how he just couldn't believe that when he's around people and stuff, he has ideas in his head. And when he goes, before he goes to voice them, somebody else voices it. And then he has another, you know, thing to say and somebody else voices it. And everybody is like, he said, it's just weird. It's like everybody can read everybody anymore. And this was just, um, you know, not someone who does this type of work. I don't think I'm not aware of that. Doesn't seem like he does the meditation type work like we're doing. But just the fact that the masses are starting to become more telepathic. And I've heard it more from people that I've run into um, saying the same thing, just, just out of the blue. It's just so strange. But um, I do think we're becoming more of a network of light. And um, yeah, so thanks for bringing that up. And I just wanted to share because it was just synchronistic. <laughs> Thank you. Listening to Alexander tell about his friend who's in the courtroom with what's going on with the, the South African thing, I was looking at the questions in front of us and the energies of Capricorn was sort of sticking out. And there's the law that is trying to 
transform something that's not very good and leading out of materialism to a sense of responsibility and onto spiritual awakening to try to see what is the best for humanity, the greater good of all. So I sort of see that maybe as Capricorn energies in the courtroom. Thanks. Uh, on the question of uh, materialism, uh, question one, um, coming to an end, uh, I just happened to read today, I think it was something that um, Alexandra, you put on uh, one of the webinars about reading Glamour, A World Problem, page 172 to 190. And there's a piece in there about uh, that suggests strongly that what's happening today with all the um, upheaval is that we are going to be forcibly made to lose the materialism because we're going to be short of things. So uh, that will be helping too. Thanks. I think also um, in relation to question one, um, as we're uh, evolving um, in consciousness, um, we uh, learn more and more about the uh, the plan, the hierarchical plan, and uh, the um, broader purpose. Um, of the divine and um, um, that uh, helps us um, as, as, we as we commit ourselves to um, aiding in that purpose and become more and more aware of the plan. Um, I think will, um, becomes, will becomes more and more a part of our lives. We tune into that greater will um, I know we learn in, in DK's writing that we really don't know much about humanity, does not know much about will yet, but by uh, joining in that, uh, working for that plan, it becomes a part of us and a part of our lives, um, even when we're not very uh, conscious of it. Also, in, in question two, um, I think... Helen, as you said, there is so much overlap in uh, teachings, really, um, between the uh, traditional religions and in uh, the ones that are doing it well, at least, uh, and not totally based on glamour and emotion. The, um, there's a lot of overlap in the ideas and beliefs. I think the difference um, between what we're doing and what has done in a lot of the churches is that we are emphasizing um, our own responsibility without uh, necessarily um, having some person or institution between us and um, and our re religious or our spiritual awakening. Um, there's not that uh, intermediary that's supposedly necessary 
uh, as it seems to be in some of the churches. With us, it's more of a direct experience and an accept a responsibility that we accept individually and as groups together. Thank you. Continuing the conversation on question one, um, I believe, I suspect what will happen as humanity becomes more spiritual is I think the materialism will, will gently fade away and it'll happen faster for some more than others. But I think there's a number of reasons for this. Um, one is I, I think a lot of materialism is driven by fear or lack or perceived lack, I should say. And this idea of I, I better accumulate enough before I age or this other thing happens. And when humanity's abilities open up and they tap into their spiritual abilities, they'll realize that this accumulation isn't necessary and that what's needed is provided in the moment. And it's the way the avatars live, right? And as the ideal, that as something's needed, it's provided to them to do their mission and then they, they can leave it aside. It's like the story of the... I believe it was Buddha who talk about, you know, using the boat to cross the river and then gently setting the boat aside when it was no longer needed. It wasn't a possession. It was used to cross the river and then they could move on because the boat would be an encumbrance beyond that point. And I, I believe as people awake spiritually, that's part of what will happen is that these material, the need won't be there, but then they'll also begin to feel heavy as they, as they travel further. Um, the other aspect is an interesting thing about materialism is this idea of desire and desiring things that kind of fuels um, consumerism and consumption. And I think all of us fall prey to it at some point in our lives. But there's this idea is if you go through some of these things that desire has like a magnetic quality. And in the beginning, you think, oh, I, I really I'm going to strive towards these things or these material aspects. And then you find once that's satisfied. It doesn't give you, you know, it might give you an initial high, but it dissipates very quickly and it, it happens faster and faster the more you do it. And so one technique is to kind of exhaust the desire in that as things happen and you satisfy these desires and it happens again and again and again, it loses its magnetism on you because you'll realize you're like, wait a minute, I've done this 10, you know, 10 to 100 times before. Nothing's ever what I think it's going to be. So why even bother? But the spiritualism it's always more than I thought it would be. So I I will go towards that. And I, I think people will realize this more and more. And this, um, so it's like that combination of people awakening, no longer feeling the need, but then also this, um, as things become more spiritual, there'll be an increase in abundance. And then people will get to experience that firsthand and then realize I, I don't necessarily need all these things. And they're not giving me what I, I think they will. And it'll just, these things will just sort of, dissipate energetically and then higher forms of energy will will come in as as others have mentioned thank you Yes, it's very resonant uh, for me, uh, what you, John, saying. Um, considering especially the the change that can come and is promised will come in re in uh, relations of the attitudes towards death, recognizing that death is, uh, is an illusion, that death is uh, not... It doesn't end our experience so that's would create a big shift and i think we all notice the how much the attitudes in society in mass consciousness changed in the last i don't know 10 20 years in, in towards the recognition of the soul and i think it's it's the step forward that the recognition that the, the death is an illusion and people more and more 
uh, on a very co uh, a common level identify themselves with the soul and said, of course, yes, yes, I am a soul. And uh, it is part of this wider transformation. And uh, that would inevitably bring that change of the uh, materialistic attitudes and uh, desires, as you say, John, absolutely. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I was going to go to the third question, but I just w want to, in advance, just sort of build on Alexander's thought. Um, I had an experience yesterday um, talking to an old friend whose life <clears throat> has been very directed along the professional line, and she has never been married, and she has no children, and she recently had a real health scare where she is now hospitalized and 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 really i think for the first time consciously thinking about the end of her life and i who have spent a lifetime exploring death in a professional way and just in a spiritual way and have really come to a place of knowing that we are multiply incarnated beings and that our souls are who we are. Um, I was struck by her regret. She, she cried profusely with me because she feels so alone and is now regretful of some of the past that she took in her life. And it was... Uh, the circumstances just were there for me to speak to her about this life and that this may not be the only life. And it was an incredibly enlightening conversation that grew in its light as we spoke and as I comforted her with the contemplation that actually there's much more than this life and that maybe some of the choices that she made were very important for this life and that there will be other lifetimes and and that there will be other opportunities for her to potentially do different things in different lifetimes. And it was extraordinary to feel the shift of energy in her contemplation of this and and her it was almost as if there was a sense of a light going on a, a light of knowing and she was so grateful for that perspective um so it just it sort of aligns a little bit what what alexandra is talking about because i think that when that aspect of our life, our mortality, our, our, the illusion of our mortality is collectively understood, it, it brings an extraordinary shift in the way we live and the way we act and the way we are able to forgive and the way we are able to understand that there really are no victims or perpetrators, that this is... Oh, an extraordinary opportunity of learning and lessons. That said, what I was going to speak to in terms of the group is, as we all know, and as I think an increasing opportunity that happens in groups, is there are lessons that are learned in groups that you cannot learn on your own, <laughs> that we learn in these, as you were speaking of John, the microcosm, and I believe that then they spread out into the macrocosm. And I think we're beginning to see this, but things like sharing and cooperation and listening and forgiveness, these are m m aspects and qualities that we learn in group, n n not separate. And, and the thing that keeps ringing, and I don't really know where to put it, but what keeps ringing through my mind through all of these conversations and all of your sharings is the golden rule and that how important the golden rule is within groups, within all aspects of life, and, and really speaks to the love thy neighbor as thyself 
but also treating thy neighbor as one would want to be treated. And that is a very important masked intention that will bring humanity into a very different light. So thank you. I've been looking at uh, the first two lines. One is the will to love and the other invoke masked intent. And when I think about uh, the meaning behind masked intent, it's clear that there is a movement that people want to be in groups. I mean, even when you look at what's happening on the internet, everybody has this need to belong. And I think, uh, when we talk about a network of light, uh, we certainly as a group uh, know that we are part of this network of and light because we are soul and we're all connected to each other. In fact, we're one soul. Um, and so when even we hold that idea, it has to it has to move into the soul of humanity. And the one thing that Master ZK talks about is looking at the intent or the meaning behind what is happening. So as you see groups coming together because uh, they wanna share a common idea, they want to be part of something that is bigger than themselves, we understand this as an evolutionary move uh, from being individual in Pisces to being part of a group in the Aquarian age. And, um, I think uh, where we can stand in terms of connecting with all the groups that are a group of light, uh, which Alexandra mentioned, we can support uh, that evolution of consciousness because we are that. We are part of that love uh, that can support mass intent. Um, we stand as a mass. We came in in, Cap in cancer. When you think of uh, the opposite of Capricorn Cancer, we came in as a mass and we're starting to understand who we are in terms of spirit as a mass. That's why the first initiation is gonna happen um, in humanity as a mass, as opposed to individuals. And so we're in a place where we're part of massed intent on one level and we can affect massed intent on another. And the mass intent above us, which is hierarchy, is part of ourselves. Um, so it runs through basically all three questions. Uh, when you think of how we could utilize Capricorn's energy now in terms of knowing um, that we are moving in our own expansions and that Capricorn helps move from the most concrete uh, to the most exalted. I think that uh, right now, especially for the new moon, to set that intent um, to connect um, through that network of light with each other and to work at that highest level uh, will in fact close the door where evil dwells and uh, move the masses a little bit closer to uh, the energy of light that is part of themselves. So thank you.
Let, let us hold the silence, reflecting on everything that's been shared as we prepare for the meditation. Trying to identify the most resonant ideas that be can become seeds or thought forms to be magnetized and radiated through our meditation. Over to you, Lin. Please lead us in the meditation. Let us move into silence. Become aware of the stillness within. Align with your heart and soul, and from your soul, link with the group heart, the group mind and the group soul. The heightened vibration and love that we hold within our group now draws the presence of higher vibrational beings who are here to guide and assist the energy and thought forms we will be magnetizing. Let us link now with the hierarchy, connecting with them through our group and a Karana thus linking the heavens and the earth, the inner world of meaning, and the subtle world of glamour. Visualize before us the glowing beauty of our chalice, which our work together feeds and fills. This golden chalice is made of numerous threads of lighted golden energy that we have provided as we have stood together in the contemplation of our lighted thoughts. And as we place our focus together here, we are influenced by the energies of Capricorn. We know that everything has its purpose and that nothing is permanent, always in a flux of continuous glowing change, morphing from the inflow and outflow of the energies which surround us at the time. Capricorn on the Cardinal Cross is one of the great transformers and is characterized, characterized by the energies of concretization, transformation, and conclusion. This most concrete of signs with its ruler Saturn leads down the path of rebirth to earth experiences, inaugurating new cycles of effort, of strife and struggle again and again, 
It's concretizing energy, demonstrating lessons on the lower planes. Over time, the lure of the material wanes and the radiance of the soul increases, creating a bridge to higher consciousness and intuitive vision of the plan and divine purpose for humanity. Finally, by means of Capricorn's initiatory energy, the mountaintop experience unlocks pure love and identification with all life, bringing victorious conclusion to the long separative human struggle. The challenge of Saturn is replaced by the balanced love and intelligence found in the higher energy of Venus. So let us now reconnect with our topic, will to love, invoking masked intent to close the door where evil dwells. Take a few moments in silence to reflect on all that has been said as well as our responses. We ask the hierarchy to guide and inspire us as we allow our thoughts to crystallize, grasping the essence of the purpose of our work throughout this cycle. And with love, we offer our efforts into the chalice, each one unmuting and speaking as you are moved to. We also honor those who choose not to speak, but who silently offer their formulated seeds into the chalice. After each vocalized offering, we will allow each seed 
each seed to rest in silence for a while before the next one is offered. Let us now begin. Power through group harmony. the importance of commitment to our group work. May the golden rule help us to awaken to the light so that we can love with massed intent. Standing in the radiatory light of hierarchy, we evoke the light of soul in humanity. As humanity works in massed intent, group consciousness is realized. May humanity realize the love that underlies the happenings of the time. International Criminal Court event that's taking place now bring transforming wisdom and enlightenment to humanity and justice for all because without justice there is no peace. May the petals of the heart center of humanity open and radiate love. All threads are woven into the healthy and wise tapestry of our oneness.
that magnetic radiance of the soul transforms magnetic attractiveness of matter. Are there any others who would still like to speak? Then we focus on the purpose of our work today and the seeds collected, allowing them to vibrate and resonate within the, within the embracing light of our group vessel. We magnetize it now with the light of Capricorn. We invoke the will to good to empower our group intention. We lift our group chalice toward the hierarchy, offering it as group service to the plan. We now turn toward humanity and offer our group service to support the collective evolution of humankind.
to seal and complete our work together today, let us sound the great invocation. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into human minds. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into human hearts. May Christ descend on earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide all little human wills, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call humanity, let the plan of love and light work out, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. So mote it be and help us each to do our part. Om. 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 Thank you, friends. We will continue our work in the next cycle, working with the energy of Aquarius. Our work is an experimental work in the group, self-organizing, and each month a new person steps in to focalize our work. Next month it will be Judy who will lead us in our work. We invite you to consider volunteering in the cycle of Pisces, stepping in to focalize our work. We work with a four beat cycle, meeting in the lead to the full moon with the group of guardians, where we share on the most resonant ideas of the time related to the theme of focus offering our ideas and this focusing the topic for the month. If you're interested to join that meeting, which will happen sometimes next week, please let us know. And then we would meet at the distribution phase of the full moon to invoke the vision and the guidance, inviting impressions on the topic of the month followed by a quarter moon meeting where we will share further our impressions 
and finally meeting for the new moon as we did today to sh for final share of expressions expressing them as seeds to be magnetized and radiated towards humanity thank you friends <laughs>